Kia ora, welcome back, I'm the Kiwi Coder, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can convert your character from a rigid body to a uh, character controller. So you can see here the um, character can walk down steps, it can walk down slopes, uh, it can jump and like shoot in the air, I think it can also like reload in the air, uh, it can fall off ledges, and it can also um, yeah, like push around uh, rigid bodies, like this, like dynamic rigid bodies, and can like jump on top of them and stuff as well. Okay, um, so this is all done using just the native uh, Unity's character controller um, and there's various different properties that the character has that you can play with. Um, just give you a look at them now. Jump height, gravity, step down, air control, jump damp, ground speed and push power. Okay, so let's get into it. So this video follows on from a previous video I've made, the weapon reloading using animation events in Unity. Um, so in the scene, I actually want to convert this character from using a rigid body and capsule collider to a character controller. And one of the main reasons for that is so I can walk upstairs like this. Um, so these ones sort of seem to be okay. Sometimes it does get a little bit stuck at the bottom, like there. Um, but larger stairs, it just it can't handle. And I think a character controller is much better for that. Um, the other thing is, you'll notice like if I go up this ramp, the character gets like a little bit airborne at the top of it. And also when I walk down these steps, it sort of bounces down the steps rather than walking down them smoothly. Um, so those are the main reasons for converting to a character controller. And I think you, you just have much uh, more fine grain control. It'll be a little bit more work, but um, it'll be, yeah, give you a lot more flexibility, I hope. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Um, so just a couple of things I want to point out is um, in my project settings, these are the physics uh, settings that I'm using. Um, so I've set the time step to 0 0.01 just to make it a little bit smoother. And also um, one other thing I noticed is um, when the character sort of, if you go left and right, you can see the animation sort of snapping there and it looks pretty bad. So an easy fix for that is going into the uh, input manager and turning snap off on the horizontal and vertical axes. And this will just mean that the input values that are fed to the animation are now blended smoothly and the character will look much better. Okay, so yeah, with all that, let's get into it. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, remove the rigid body and the capsule collider and add a character controller. And uh, the height needs to be just pretty much the same values as what we had before, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 0 0.2 for the radius. Um, and it actually looks okay in the scene here, but when I hit play, uh, the character actually floats like a little bit off the ground, you can see. And that's uh, because of this um, skin width. If I zero that out, it falls back to the ground. But you don't actually want to clear that, you want to leave that in there. So um, a, a better way to do it is just uh, change these offset values. So I'm going to use, um, make the character slightly smaller and offset it slightly higher. And that just means the character's feet should be on the ground, even though the, the character is in the air. Uh, sorry, the capsule is not directly on the ground. Um, yeah, and the other thing that we need to do is just set this minimum move distance to zero. I've found that um, that can have some pretty weird effects on the is grounded property of the character controller. Um, yeah, cool. So uh, the animator is still set to update mode normal. And if I hit play, the you can see the uh, character is really jerky now um, and an easy fix you would think would be to just set it to animate physics uh, which will mean the character controller is no longer being animated in update it gets animated in fixed update which fixes the um the locomotion part of the character except um, what happens is the aiming portion of the character now the the aiming portion is not actually matching up with that dot anymore and it's kind of a, a tricky problem I've found to solve um, because the animator, it's now animating the character controller and running the, um, the animation rigging is all being controlled by this property here. So we actually want to separate those two and update the character inside fixed update like we are here, but then uh, m carry on running the animation rigging during the normal update, which will, um, sorry, if I just turn this laser back on, that will that fixes the uh, the the sort of alignment here of the laser to the crosshair. So to do that, um, I've come up with like sort of a hacky way to do it, but it works, and I'm going to roll with it. So if you open up the character locomotion script, what we can do is just override on animator move, and in here 
Um, I'm just going to create a new variable called root motion. And what this, what I'm going to do is basically accumulate the root motion of the animator by adding the um, delta position. So this is a vector three. Adding the uh, delta position of the animator. That's basically the root motion of the animator every time the animator runs. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to accumulate it here. And now um, the character won't actually move anymore if I went into play mode. So I need to actually move the character inside fixed update. Um, so to do that, I need to get a reference to the, um, the character controller. Uh, just I'm just going to call it like CC and just get that inside start. Cool. And now we can just do CC dot move by that root motion amount. And um, after we move it, we just need to clear the root motion. So I'm just going to set that to vector three dot zero. And what this has effectively done is move the root motion from uh, running inside the update mode normal. But now we've moved just the root motion portion of the animator into fixed update. So now the character controller has been moved inside fixed update, but the animator, which runs the animation rigging as well, is happening inside update. So everything um, basically is still happening in the same order as when we were using the rigid body. And you can see that the, um, the laser is now correctly aligning to the, uh, the crosshair and also the character is moving around smoothly. Um, so yeah, that is a workaround I've got. If you've got a better idea, please let me know, but it seems to do for now. Actually, I'll just go back into play mode and because we're now using a character controller, um, we can actually walk up the stairs, um, but the character doesn't fall to the ground now um, and I can't jump or anything. So yeah, this is the next stage to fix. Um, so if you just open up the character locomotion, we're going to add jumping and gravity at the same time. Um, so just create a couple of new variables, one called the jump height and one called gravity. So this is how high the character can jump and basically how fast the character is going to fall to the ground. And we just need a couple of other variables, private ones, one for the velocity of the character and just a, another variable to store the state that the character is in. So um, I'm going to split the uh, fixed update into two paths, one for when the character is in the air and one for when it is um, on the ground. So currently this is just handling when the character is on the ground. Okay, so just uh, create one more function called uh, jump. And what we're going to do is inside update, just check if input dot get key down uh, key code dot space and then just call that jump function and first of all we just want to check that we're not already jumping um, and if we're not jumping then we can see it is jumping to true and what we'll do is just set the y velocity of the character equals to this crazy equation here which is math dot square root times gravity times jump height <clears throat> and the reason for this equation is basically it lets you change the gravity um, without affecting how high the character actually can jump and there's two times it's uh it's i think what it's doing is basically differentiating like the force due to gravity or something i think it's some kind of calculus um, which just kind of meshes everything to one Cool. Um, so yeah, now the character um, will be will jump if I press space, uh, but we're not actually using this velocity anywhere. So just inside update, I'm going to split this into two. Um, one for when the character is jumping. Um, we want to basically reduce the y velocity um, by that gravity amount times time dot fixed delta time, and then we can just uh, move the character controller. Uh, by integrating the velocity again, um, time dot fixed delta time, like that. And finally, like when we're jumping, um, when we hit the ground, we want to set this as jumping to false. So uh, we can just set as jumping equal to cc dot is grounded. And um, basically, this variable will st will store if the character was touching the ground after the last call to this function here, move. So it's always best to check is grounded immediately after you've you've called cc.move. 
um, and yeah so there we can set the is jump into false and for the other case when the character is grounded we're just going to do exactly what we were doing before um, so yeah now there's two paths one for when the character is in the air it's going to do all this logic and the other one is when it's on the ground it's just going to get the root motion from the animator which is uh, going to make everything look pretty smooth um, so yeah if I just press play now I can show you how that looks there's still a couple of extra things to do oh I need to set the, the jump height um, so if I set the jump height to like 3 and gravity to like 20 for example well <laughs> don't know what that was cool so now that the character can jump and then it lands on the ground and if I uh, there's still a couple of issues like if I walk off there's nothing to say it's jumping at this point but if I do jump then it will reach all the way to the ground and yeah the character can move and everything is good except if I move forward and then jump the character just jumps like straight up into the air and you'll also notice this weird glitching that happens when the character lands and there's two things to fix here the, the glitching is caused by, now let me just come out of play mode. The glitching when I land is caused by this root motion. Um, it's accumulating <clears throat> even when the character is in the air. So when the character hits the ground, I'm just gonna set uh, root motion, basically just clear the root motion again. Set the root motion back to zero when it hits the ground. Um, or just when it's in the air, I guess. Yeah, you could check if it's no longer jumping then clear it, but. I think more branches is, is a bit less clean um, and so that will fix the glitching and the other bit is just the character jumping straight up and down as we move um, I actually want to inherit the velocity that the character had when it was walking when we hit the jump key so we can do that just by reading the velocity value out of the animator and this velocity will come from the root motion inside here so now if I go into play mode oh let me just set these properties again jump height 3 gravity 20 if I go into play mode now <clears throat> and if I walk forward you can now see it's kind of easier to see if you go sideways the character inherits the velocity that it had when it um, when it was walking on the ground and also that that glitching when uh, when the character lands is no longer happening Okay, cool. Um, so the next bit is uh, just making it so we can like walk down these slopes. Um, it looks a bit silly right now. So just open back up the uh, character locomotion script. And uh, what we want to do is every time the character walks, uh, takes a step forward, which is what this uh, root motion part is doing. We also just want to step down by some amount. So the character is kind of going in this path here, like it's walking down some stairs. And I'm just going to control how much it steps down by um, by something called like step down, <laughs> just to create a new public float variable. Step down, and what we can do is just add on um, a vector three dot down times by that step down amount. And yeah, so if I just set this property. I'll just make it like the same as the step offset for the character controller. So the character controller has got the step offset 0.3. I'll just make, but it only steps upwards. It doesn't, it doesn't step down, which is kind of surprising. You have to implement that yourself. So um, the step down, I'll just set to 0.3. And now this should let us just walk downstairs. So if I walk up and yeah, now the character correctly walks down slopes and it can also walk down these stairs as well. Um, so that's all nice and smooth okay so the next bit is um, just adding there is still an issue like if I walk off the edge here it just like drops down immediately because it's just taking a huge step down and um, the character never goes into the is jumping state so the gravity never comes into effect um, so what we need to do is just inside the character locomotion scripts <clears throat> if we're moving along the ground um, what we want to do is just check if the character is still grounded so we can do that just using like if cc dot is grounded so if the character was this is the um let me just put some comments here this is like is grounded state and then this one is like is in air state so if the character controller is no longer grounded after we took a step we know that we've stepped off an edge so at this point we want to 
um, basically do everything that we're doing in here. Um, set is jumping to true, um, so it becomes in air. That means on the next tick, it will come around to this section of the loop and gravity will be applied. Um, but before that, we want to set the, just reset the gravity on the Y axis to, uh, to zero. And then the final thing in here is uh, just also inheriting that velocity from Oh, I'll do that before inheriting the velocity from the animator again. So when we walk off a slope, we kind of get some momentum going out and falling off the edge. And that should be enough to let us walk off the edge of things now. Um, so if I just open this back up, hit play. Oh, Unity is so slow sometimes. <laughs> Yay, so now the character um, falls, falls off the edge. You notice there is like a small little kind of one frame glitch where the character steps down before it goes, um, before it starts falling. And you can actually tune this by just reducing the step down amount. So it's not as noticeable there. And I should still be able to walk down. Yeah, I can still walk down these things. Um, so you can play with that amount there. One thing that you could do, which I'm not gonna do for this tutorial <coughs> is after we step down, if we're no longer grounded, then you could actually step back up again and that should get rid of that small little one frame glitch uh, in here. But uh, for now, I'm just gonna leave it as is. Okay, um, so I think the next stage is just gonna be adding some air control. Like if I go into play mode and if I jump and then hit the keys left and right, um, the character like can't move when it's in the air and it feels a little bit awkward. Um, so we'll just add that now. Okay, so we just want to add like a new property here uh, for to control how much the character can move in the air. So I'm just going to create a new uh, public float called air control. And um, I'm going to create a new function here called calculate air control. And what this is going to do is, oops, this should return a vector three. Um, this is going to basically return the transform.forward, so the forward vector of the character times the vertical input on the keyboard, so that's W and S on the keyboard, and add that to the horizontal input, and you can just use that using transform.right times input.x. And the result of all of that, um, I'm going to scale it by that air control value, so if that's zero, it'll have no effect. And one last thing is I'm just going to divide this value by 100 um, because I prefer working in a bit larger units. And um, the value I'm going to use for air control in here is uh, 2.5. It's it seems to be a little bit subtle, but not too strong. Um, so yeah, the final thing is just to integrate it into this uh, the in air is in air state or is jumping state. Um, so let me just try to make this a little bit simpler to read. If I extract that uh, uh, section there, the gravity section, and just call this displacement equals velocity times fixed delta time. And we can just pass that in there. So now what I'm gonna do is just, from that final displacement due to gravity, I'm gonna add on this uh, calculate air control factor and one reason for doing it like this, uh, rather than adding a f another force to the velocity, like the same way gravity is done, is um, I wanted the, uh, the character to move linearly throughout the air. So if this, um, if we just have a look at this again, it's, it's just reading from the input values, right? So say, let's just ignore the horizontal part. Let's say the character is walking forward in the air. Say this is one, this whole equation will, will return like the same value every time. And then that same value will get added on to the character um, every frame. So it won't get faster and faster the longer you hold the, the keyboard down. Whereas gravity, um, the character does get faster and faster the longer it falls. Um, but I don't want that behavior for the air control just because it, it felt a little bit weird. It would start off moving slowly in the air and then suddenly get really fast. Um, whereas just having this linear, um, I found just it, it was a bit better to control in my opinion. Um, so yeah, if we just check this out now. Hit play and if I jump, 
then um, you can see if I start moving in the air then the character will move left and right and forwards and backwards and yeah that's uh that's the air control so now if I like move along and then jump um, there is still some you can like the the motion that we inherit from the uh, the root motion of the animation is now getting added on to the air control so the character actually speeds up more than uh, more than the velocity it had when it was uh, walking along the ground so I just want to add an extra value in here which um, called like the damping amount and we'll just damp the uh, I'm gonna call it like jump damp and we just multiply this value by that inherited velocity um, anywhere that we're using it so uh, there and also there um, and this just lets it's just another kind of thing to play with um, so if I now set the jump damp to like something like 0 0.5 then because we have now air control uh, then you can kind of tune it so the character is still walking about the same speed but um, I've still got air control and it kind of just feels a little bit smoother you can uh, you can do crazy things like set the jump damp to like three and then you'll inherit like three times the uh, the motion of the the character as it's walking along but yeah this just gives you like um, some extra stuff to play with I'm just gonna leave it at 0.5 Okay, for this next section, I just want to um, clean up the scripts a little bit. Uh, so this this has uh, gotten a little bit kind of hairy to read. So I'm just going to split this um, code into like update in air function, and this one into a function called update uh, on ground or something. So just uh, if you select all that code, and then you can refactor it out using quick actions and refactorings, and just use extract method, and kind of call this update in air. And then just do the same for this uh, section here. Quick actions refactoring, hit enter, update on ground. And yeah, now we've got uh, two, two chunks of code here. Um, and yeah, and it's calling each of them from up here correctly. So the next bit is just refactoring out these uh, three lines of code because this stuff is happening in two places. Uh, one is up here and one is down here. The only difference being this uh, Y value that is set. So. First, I'm just going to extract uh, this section uh, using introduce local, and I'm going to call this um, like jump uh, velocity, and move that up. And now I can extract all of these three lines out um, using another function called like set oops, extract method set in air. And it's actually figured out uh, to pass in that jump velocity there. Amazing. Um, so now I can just call this uh, set in air function from up here and just pass in this zero amount. Man, I love C sharp. The tools are so good. <laughs> Much better than C. Um, so update in air. Uh, update on ground yeah that's all good oh the last thing i want to do is actually um split this bit on ground into two factors here so there's two kind of distinct things going on one is the character is stepping forward and then the ca character is stepping down so just gonna again like extract this as a parameter um called like step down amount and then extract this as a parameter called whoops step forward amount and I might actually just swap those around the other way. Cool, so the character first steps forward and then steps down, which is cool. Um, so one easy thing that we could do is actually just scale the root motion uh, by some factor, which will uh, let us speed up the, um, the character uh, without changing the animation speed. So if I just go into play mode, you can kind of see if I, if I walk forward, the character can't get any faster than what the animation is playing right now. There's no way of basically making the character kind of run or artificially run. Um, but an easy way to do that is just by scaling this uh, this root motion amount um, when we take a step forward. So I'm just going to create a new property here called uh, like uh, on ground speed, probably. Yeah, ground speed is probably a good word. So public float ground speed. 
and this will just be a value of like one for which will keep the default root motion um, you can easily just set that value to zero if you want to cancel out all the root motion but I'll just uh, I'll try with a value of like three for example and hit play just yeah so now you can see the character is like moving much faster um, except all of the root motion and stuff is still all being combined together with everything that we've written um, which is pretty cool um, except there is still one issue like um, if I jump in the middle of that the character is still jumping at like the old speed it's not inheriting that uh, ground speed parameter so there is one more place where we need to multiply out the ground speed and that is when we set in air um, we just need to basically multiply the animated velocity by that um, that whoops, that ground speed value here so yeah when we inherit the velocity from the the uh, animation we just also want to multiply uh, by the ground speed and now if I go into play and yeah and jump yeah the character is yeah basically uh, inheriting the same velocity yeah and uh, I just made these hills here when I was testing um, just to like check that the character wasn't kind of like falling off at high speeds like going over the uh, going over the hills it sticks to the ground like pretty well you can kind of see like it's not jumping up and down it did a little bit there but characters walking kind of ridiculously fast at the moment so I'm kind of fine with that so I'll just set that back to like 1.2 and the next stage is just going to be um, adding some like a different animation so sorry if I just go back into play mode and if I jump the character is like walking in the air so this is yeah like a just cosmetic thing obviously it looks stupid right now but um, yeah we can uh, fix that up now so just open up the um, the animator on the main character um, so currently there's still only one state which is surprising um, but I'm just gonna add another state here uh, called like is jumping and for this state we just need to assign an animation um, I'm gonna use uh, this one here run forwards jump frame one so this comes from another one of my animations uh, sorry <laughs> another one of my uh, tutorial videos and you can find that um, if unity would let me drag these windows out uh, inside animations mail animations aerial jump running jump and it's uh, it's one of these so I can show you what that animation looks like um, it is pretty simple it is just a character kind of idling in the air and this is basically what I wanted for the jump I didn't want anything kind of elaborate because we'll blend from the uh, the running state directly to the the jumping state so yeah just having something simple like this for jumping worked for me uh, depends on the type of game you're making but yeah there's a few other um, few other kind of animations as well but uh, so pick whatever one you like but this was my favorite so I'm gonna use that one um, so the next thing to do is just create these transitions from the locomotion state to the jumping state so I'm gonna create a new animation parameter called is jumping and create a transition from the locomotion state and another transition back from the is jumping state so this one here um, just deselect has exit time because this transition should not happen automatically um, it should only happen on a condition and I'm gonna set the transition duration to 0.1 I want it to blend fairly quickly from the running state to the jumping state and the condition I'm just gonna set that is jumping to true and then basically just do the reverse for going back the other way from is jumping to locomotion deselect has exit time so it doesn't happen automatically set the transition duration to one and add a condition of is jumping but this time it's going to be false cool and the last thing is actually just setting this uh this boolean parameter from the code so uh, the place first place to do that is in the set in air function so here we can just go sorry animator dot set bool uh, is jumping and here we just set it to true and then um, so that will happen both when we jump and also when we start falling um, 
So yeah, that's good. And the other place we just need to set it to false is when we land. So that's obviously going to be when we're in the air. Um, we can just set is jumping to this value here. And that is, it's been read from is grounded. So yeah, all of that will work. Cool. So if I go back into the scene after Unity loads, hit play, then what has happened to my window? That's a bit weird. Yay. Now the character goes into like a really simple jump animation. And I can jump with a weapon, which is pretty cool. And the even cooler thing is I can host my weapon mid air which I just reckon looks so badass, looks awesome. And uh, I can also like shoot and stuff in the air. It's pretty cool. It's like all of this stuff just kind of came together. Didn't really have to do anything for all of that to work, which I'm quite impressed about. It's all uh, to do with animation rigging, I think. So yeah, um, the final thing to do is I can't actually run into these blocks <laughs> um, because yeah, that, this sort of, uh, I, I would normally be able to push these blocks around like I can shoot them uh, when you're using a rigid body and a capsule collider, but with a character controller, again, you've got to program um, that behavior yourself. So yeah, you don't really get it for free, um, but luckily Unity has a solution for me. Sorry, that was real lame. Um, and uh, I'll put a link to this page in the description. Um, oh yeah, I've been checking out videos by this guy, Sebastian Legue. Uh, his stuff is like amazing, really highly recommend uh, all his videos, so massive shout out to him. Um, yeah, he's got some, some pretty awesome videos, definitely check out his page if you haven't seen it. Um, so yeah, the address is going to be on controller collider hit. Um, yeah, this, this function here is basically what we want to copy, yeah, I'll put a link in the description for this page. Um, this function here is what we want to copy and paste that into just the bottom of the character locomotion. Um, the only thing is I forgot to paste the push power, so I'll just create that quickly here. Public float push power. Push power. <clears throat> and if I set push power to 2 and hit play, now when I jump into these things, yay, I can like push the blocks around and stuff, which is cool. Sweet, yeah, so that's it for this tutorial. Um, if you've made it to the end, again, really appreciate you watching. And if you wanna see more videos like this, uh, just hit uh, subscribe. And if you liked the video, hit like. Um, really appreciate it if you share it with your friends and stuff. Um, there'll be more videos coming soon. Let me know in the description, uh, or the comments, sorry, uh, what kind of videos you'd like to see. Um, I've got all sorts of things on my mind. Um, yeah, so uh, we'll see you again soon. Kakite!